time for business, and that means Kate Moody. Boeing has given its first peek into the cost of the global grounding of its 737 MAX fleet. Absolutely, Mark. Those planes, of course, taken out of the skies back in March uh, after two deadly crashes within five months. In the weeks since, Boeing says it's already lost at least a billion dollars. That's not including the cost of rolling out a software fix, which is intended to get the aircraft approval to continue flying. Anka Ula has been looking at Boeing's bottom line. Boeing's 737 aircraft was not only the American plane maker's best-selling passenger jet, but a crucial cash cow. The newest version of the plane, the 737 MAX, was meant to be Boeing's largest source of revenue and profit this year. But two fatal crashes later, the 737 MAX has become a black mark on Boeing's record. As regulators grounded the planes that were in service, and Boeing cut production of new jets and halted delivery of planes that were on order. The grounding knocked 21 percent off the company's earnings in the first three months of the year, leading to both lower revenues and profits and costing the company $1 billion in production costs so far. In its earnings announcement, Boeing abandoned its 2019 financial outlook and halted share buybacks, citing uncertainty over when and how the grounded jets will fly again. To secure its future, Boeing must convince investors it will get the 737 MAX safely back in the air and soon, as well as present alternative models to keep money flowing and compete with European rival Airbus. Across the company, we're focused on safety, returning the 737 MAX to service and earning and re-earning the trust and confidence of customers, regulators and the flying public. The plane maker said it sped up production of its 787 Dreamliner to 14 aircraft per month, from 12 last quarter, while the twin aisle 777X remained on track to be delivered next year. Well, Boeing shares dropped as those first quarter figures were published, but they've recovered uh, to close up about 0.4 percent. Wall Street, meanwhile, slipped by the closing bell, although the Nasdaq hit a new intraday high earlier on. Uh, we saw it scaling back at the close. The S&P 500 also moving back from a possible new record. Disappointing results from Caterpillar and AT&T weighing down trade. Losses of about a quarter of a percentage point at the close there. In Europe, the DAX was boosted by strong results from German software giant SAP, which shares, who saw its shares up 12 percent, the CAC 40 losing about one third of a percent here in Paris. The British government will reportedly allow Huawei to play a role in the development of its 5G network. The decision by the UK's National Security Council is a snub to the Trump administration, which has been lobbying its allies to boycott the chi Chinese tech giant because of its ties to Beijing. Huawei will be blocked from core parts of the UK's 5G network, but will be allowed to supply some parts of that next generation mobile technology. Theresa May's government has yet to formally announce the decision, but the head of the UK's government intelligence agency said it was assessing more factors than just where companies are based. Analyze a company for their suitability to supply equipment to the UK's telecoms networks. We're looking at the risks that arise from their security and engineering processes as well as the way these technologies are deployed in our national telecom networks. The flag of origin of 5G equipment is an important, but it is a secondary factor. This Wednesday marks six years since the Rana Plaza disaster in Bangladesh. More than 1,100 workers died after a garment factory collapsed on the outskirts of the capital. The catastrophe... The catastrophe thrust fashion brands from around the world into the spotlight and sparked a global debate about safety, ethics and the environmental impact of the industry. Well, since 2013, Fashion Revolution Day has been observed in countries where clothing brands are trying to improve manufacturing standards. Picture Organic Clothing is a French company that focuses on eco-friendly products. Its head of development told France 24's Camille Martineau that both companies and shoppers need to change their habits. We all have a duty to dress responsibly, wear products that respect both the environment and social values. But in order for them to exist, brands have to decide to produce them. So there is a responsibility for both brands and consumers. A reminder there, Mark, that the responsibility lies on both sides of a shop window. Yes, indeed. Kate, thank you very much indeed. Kate Moody with all the business.